What's up nerds, my name is Abdul Nafi. Welcome back to a brand new video. And in this one, we're going to be learning how to make this amazing animation uh, inside of Blender 3D. Now, what we've done in this animation is basically we've uh, recorded an actual video and then we've composited. Um, we've added a fake 3D object on top of it, which is obviously the robot uh, and it looks pretty realistic. So I'm going to be teaching you how to add realistic fake objects on top of your videos. Uh, so you can basically add cars, you can add... Um, uh, basically anything you want on top of your um, videos uh, apart from that this is the exact same technique which is used in movies for example like the uh, the Avengers and everything like that uh, so the suits and everything they're all fake and the planes and the ships and everything you see in movies is all fake and it's done uh, through this process uh, so we're gonna be doing it inside of blender blender 3d and it's gonna be pretty simple so yeah let's just um, jump right into it and let's get started also by the way guys if you want inspiration or ideas for your future 3d projects then be sure to follow me on Instagram at napi 3d I post all my 3d work there and on my stories i post my process and uh, sometimes short tutorials on how to make um the stuff that i make uh, recently i made this uh, 3d forest inside of unreal engine 5 um and apart from that yeah just be sure to follow me over there and i you will also get notified whenever i post a new sculpture class or a longer format course and apart from that if you want feedback on your art or you want to give feedback uh on my art then be sure to dm me or comment on any of my posts and i'll be more than happy to respond to you and apart from that yeah let's start the video all right, so now there are basically two ways of actually getting your footage and actually tracking it. One of them is it is the easier process and the other one is a little harder. Uh, but the easier process is going to require an iPhone and that iPhone has to be at least an iPhone 12 Pro or um, a 12 Pro Max or a 13 Pro or a 13 Pro Max at least. Uh, the iPhone 13 currently does not have uh, the LiDAR scanner and that's what we're going to be using in this um, uh, project. So I'm going to be showing you what that is. Um, by the way, this podcast is really good um, on whether AI is going to take um, artists' job or not. So you can just check it out. Um, so I'm just going to search um, iPhone LiDAR scanner. So you're going to see uh, that this, uh, just a second, if I go to images, you're going to see this thing right here. This is the LiDAR scanner. And what this does is that basically it captures depth information, which can then be imported into Blender. Um, and uh, so if you're recording, if you're using an iPhone for this, you, you're not going to be using the normal um, the, the normal camera app. You're going to be using uh, an app called CamTrack AR, which is totally free. And you can uh, just download it on your um, on your what do you call it on your iPhone and then you can just use it to record videos now how exactly do you record videos in that how you track your scenes I'm not going to be showing that uh, I'm not going to be showing you that because um, the people who have made this app have actually um, created their own tutorials for this so if I just search cam track AR you're going to see that uh, this video is going to come up getting started with cam track AR free camera tracking uh, for iOS uh, now this video is going to guide you on how to actually record uh, videos with your iPhone and how to bring them inside of Blender so I would definitely recommend you to use this app if you have an iPhone but if you don't have an iPhone then that is not a problem either uh, because we're going to be learning how to do it without one as well uh, so I'm just going to be closing these and let's open a brand new file in Blender and what I'm going to do is that first of all I'm going to be uh, opening a new file which is going to be a vfx file so usually we open a general file but this time we're going to be doing vfx uh, all right perfect now we, i'm going to be importing the in, uh, the video which i recorded so now make sure that the video recording is um in well in good lighting uh, is in well lit conditions um that's just going to make the track um much more easier to do apart from that you have to make sure that it actually does contain some items which are easily distinguishable and which can easily be tracked so i'm going to be showing you what i mean in just a second so i'm just going to be opening uh, the video which i am going to import and which i recorded all right so this is the video which i'm going to be using so you can just watch it and so you can see uh, what I meant by um, easily distinguishable objects were basically that uh, items which have contrast. For example, this um, this uh, cable right here, it has contrast. Uh, it's a white cable against a black background. Uh, this Fantech written right here, this is also a contrast object. And this part right here, this shiny part right here is also contrast. Um, and you can see this red speaker right there is also contrast. So uh, there has to be quite a lot of contrast in your, um, in your what do you call it, in your video uh, for it to be easily trackable. And it has to have some items which um which are not blending in with uh the background all right so once you have your video ready what you got to do is you have to simply import it inside of blender and i'm just going to be doing that right now i'm just going to go and select this video right here so i'm just going to be dragging this right here and i'm going to be dragging it inside of blender right here uh, alternatively what you could do is you could simply press this open button right here and you could just browse to wherever you had it imported so i'm just going to import it once again and all right uh, now if i just play it ahead you're going to see it's playing just normally 
and um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be uh, pressing this set scene frames. So it's going to adjust our um, keyframe, uh, adjust our frames uh, according to the length of the video. And I'm just going to press this prefetch right here, which is going to load, um, um, which is going to load the video in our memory, so it doesn't take time later on. And one thing which you might be noticing is that the colors seem a little washed out. If I just go here and if I play it, you're going to see it has much more contrast as compared to Blender. Um, it's a little more washed out. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be going to um, this render properties and inside this color management, we're, gonna, we're just going to be setting it to uh, standard instead of filmic. Now you're going to see the difference. Standard looks um, a lot more uh, like the actual clip. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be going to the, fra uh, the first frame, frame number one, and we're just going to be adding some, uh, what do you call it, adding some tracking points. So for that, what I'm going to do, simply do is that I'm just going to be pressing this detect features. Either you can just add a tracking point and you can just uh, place it wherever you want. Uh, or we can simply, or what we can do is that we can simply just uh, press this detect features right here. And it's going to be adding tracking points wherever things um, are good. And now if I just go to these settings, you're going to see that we have these options right here. Now the margin, I'm going to reduce it to eight. So that's just going to add um, a little more keyframes. And apart from that, the threshold, I'm going to set it to 0 0.01. Uh, now the reason why I'm setting it so low is that so that we can have a lot more points. Uh, and I'm just going to be reducing the distance. Now this distance is the distance between these points. If I just reduce it to 80, you're going to see it's going to add some more uh, points right there. So the more points you have, the better it is generally for your first track. Uh, however, for the final track, you need um, only I think eight points. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically it. And apart from that, let me uh, once we have these points, what I'm going to do is that simply I'm just going to go to I'm just going to expand this. Now, if I go here to this motion model menu, you're going to see that there are uh, many uh, motion models, but I'm just going to be selecting perspective because that just makes sense for this um, sort of clip. Uh, if, if, for example, you're just changing uh, the location of the camera um, and you're not rotating it or anything like that, then you can select rotation. Otherwise, you can select any of these um, depending on what you're doing with the camera. Is that simply I'm just going to select all these points by pressing uh, just selecting one and pressing A. So now all the points are selected and I'm going to press Control D on my keyboard. Now this is going to track them forward. Now this will take a little bit of time depending on uh, how fast your computer is. Um, so I'm just going to be letting it, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. All right, so now the tracking is finally complete and you're going to see uh, that most of these points are actually pretty uh, close together and they have tracked pretty well, but some of them are going astray. They're going uh, away from the general path. So I'm just going to select them and I'm just going to delete curve. Select it, delete and delete curve. And I'm going to see this one right here. This one is pretty weird. So delete that. And apart from that, I think we're basically good to go. Yeah, if you have a lot of these points, then what you what you can do is you can simply come here, um, come down to solve, and then you can just go to this cleanup and you can filter these tracks. Now, what I'm going to do with this is that you're going to set the filter threshold to, for example, like one. Now you're going to see that now any uh, tracks which have a greater value, a uh, greater error than this um, value right here, uh, they're going to be selected and you can just simply delete them. But I'm not going to do that for now. Uh, I'm just going to give it a I'm just going to solve it first and then we're going to see the results and after that we can clean up and filter our tracks so what i'm going to do is that i'm simply going to go to the first uh, frame and i'm simply going to go to the solve menu right here which i'm already in and uh, you can decide these keyframes but i'm just going to let blender decide that by pressing this button right here and we're going to be refining the focal length so now we can just simply press this solve camera motion and let it let it, just let it do its thing and i'm going to see this solve error right here is 2.11 uh now you have to bring this solve error as down as you can uh so my my goal right here is to go below one um zero point something zero point anything is basically good enough so what i'm going to do for that is simply we can remove some points which have a very high solve error so for that you can simply go to this clip display and you can select this info button right here now you're going to see if i just select one if i if i pray, press a you're going to see that all of them are going to be selected and all of their um average error is going to be displayed so you're going to see this one has 0 0.2 0 0.5 uh and most of these seem pretty good and i'm just going to be removing anyone which has a really large uh solve error so this one right here 3.144 pixels i'm just going to select that delete and press a again to select everything 2.7 i think that should be deleted as well oops make sure that not everything is selected just that specific track um these all seem to be pretty good. This one has a solver of 7.3. <laughs> so that's basically ruining our whole track. Um, and I think apart from that, this three is pretty high as well. I think that should be good enough. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be selecting all of them again, and let's press solve camera again to make sure that it has actually done something. And I'm gonna see the solve error is down to 0 0.47, which is pretty good. Um, now we can work with this. We can uh, obviously tweak it even more if you want, but I guess that is fine for now. Um, 
So our tracking part is mostly done. Now this whole part uh, would be done by the iPhone if you had an iPhone. So if you're planning to get, get one, then I would recommend you to get a pro model uh, of um, an iPhone 12 or above because that has the LiDAR sensor and it just makes your life much more easier. Um, and uh, especially with this um, tracking method, uh, this uh, with this motion tracking method, it does work on some clips, but it does not work on other clips as well because um, some clips are just generally more um, complex to track. Uh, but with CamTrack AR, with um, that iPhone feature, uh, you can obviously track almost any um almost any um situation which you want obviously there are limitations but like generally i found it to be better than that uh, than this one all right so now basically our our motion tracking part is done and now let's start working on adding um the our item uh, adding our fake 3d object and then uh obviously lighting it and adding the text textures and everything like that